Of course, there are measures in this legislation being tabled today to help small business and their employees. The government will assume 10 percent of the small business wage bill, but small business says that's not nearly enough and it's not going to help them or their workers in this badly, in, in this very damaging time, and they need a lot more help. Uh, and the situation, one would think, will only get worse with provinces such as Ontario and Quebec now ordering all non-essential businesses to close down. Dan Kelly is the president of the Canadian Federation of Independent Business uh, with 110,000 members across Canada. We've talked to him a couple of times now during this crisis and he's back today. Uh, D Dan Kelly, thanks for joining me again. It's good to see you. Happy to be here. Uh, so you've just canvassed your members again as this relief package is set to pass through Parliament over the next couple of days. Uh, what are you hearing now? It is getting worse and worse by the day, really by the hour, as government, governments make more restrictions as to which businesses can open, which ones can close, and, as cor and of course, as social distancing uh, really sets in across the country, we have now a third of small businesses, up from 25% uh, last week, but a third of small businesses just this past weekend told us that they can hang on for about a month before they're going to have to close doors permanently, not not just closed doors temporarily during the crisis, but closed doors for good, uh, given a significant sales decline. And our members have told us uh, almost two thirds of them said that their sales decline has now been uh, over half of their business has just disappeared. It is very hard for them to make payroll. The two biggest expenses for small businesses typically are payroll and then, of course, real estate or rental costs. Mm -hmm. Um, and and while there is some relief on on both sides of those of that equation, uh, it is very very small and not enough by any means to help more small businesses ride this out or or help them hang on to their staff. Okay, what uh, do you, uh, can you give us a sense of a of a number figure? What does the outbreak cost small business so far? Yeah, so we've estimated that uh, last week it was around sixty thousand. It's now doubled that to about one hundred and forty thousand dollars per per small business, and that's just the losses that have mounted over the last couple of weeks. But what small businesses are really worried about are the losses that are coming in the weeks ahead, and that's why so many Canadian companies have started to shed staff. It's one of the only things that they can do quickly to try to reduce their costs in order to keep the business uh, alive after the crisis is over. Um, but, you know, that has a huge toll, but both on the employees, uh, because they, of course, have the stress of losing their job, but it also impair impairs our recovery. If, if we lay off all of these workers, if every Canadian company starts to just dump staff, uh, as has been happening over the course of the past week, um, it's going to mean that, that to put the puzzle back together is going to take some time after the crisis part, part of the emergency is over. And... And that is what we really should be thinking about is how do we, you know, yes, everybody knows that we're going to have to uh, take some pretty drastic measures during the problem, but we need governments, we need public policymakers to start thinking about how are we going to get the economy back on its feet as quickly as possible. The measures that have been announced, of course, are welcome, uh, but they are nowhere near enough to be able to help. And other countries are doing this way better than us. Yeah, well, let's, let's go there. So the, the bill that's going to be passed by the House today, uh, we expect, uh, provides this, the government will assume 10% of, of the wage bill of a small business. Uh, I mean, given the numbers you're describing, uh, will that save anybody's job? Uh, unlikely. Uh, the 10% actually do really doesn't even cover the wages. It covers essentially the payroll taxes that a business has to pay on the wages, like right. your CPP and EI bill. So it's actually not helping the business much with the actual wage cost for the employee and, and really leaving them the, with the only other option of putting that employee, employee on employment insurance. Um, other countries around the world have, have uh, announced wage packages, costly ones. Uh, Britain was the latest uh, just on Friday, announced 80% of wages in private sector employers, not-for-profit employers, would be picked up by government. Um, that means that the business then has to try to come up with 20% of its uh, original wage bill. To me, that's going to help. It, sure, it certainly won't help everybody. There will still be giant numbers of layoffs even with that. But it means that businesses that can borrow a little bit of money or perhaps where the business has some reserves, uh, they would be able to ride this out, pay that 20% uh, difference and, and keep their staff, helping them then upon the recovery, helping the employees keep their jobs and, and reduce the stress of that. Just think about that. Mm -hmm. With millions of Canadians losing their jobs at a time when they're basically trapped in their house uh, and can't even go out and do, do things, 
The stress that this is going to put on Canadian workers is massive. We don't have to have that happen, and I know it's going to be costly, but it is also costly to have most half the workforce on employment insurance. Right. So, so uh, you've talked. Presumably, you, you. I mean, you know, I know you want more from the government. So, have you had any conversations with them about upping uh, this percentage of the wage bill they've, they've assumed, and what kind of feedback are you getting? Well, look, we've we've raised this uh, uh, regularly with uh, with pub public policymakers, government officials. Uh, politicians. I had loads, loads of MPs call me over the weekend because we've immobilized our 110,000 members to call their MPs to, to see if they can make this happen. Uh, there is great sympathy to, to raise this amount, but for whatever reason, the government hasn't moved to date. My belief is that the government will actually go there at some stage, but it's going to go there too late. And, and that's what we're dealing with. Yes, there are some things we have to get out ahead of on the health care emergency, but there are also a few things we need to get ahead of uh, on the on the economic emergency that is created by, by COVID-19, and that part has been slow. Mm. So, I mean, to be clear, because people will will hear hear this conversation and say, "Oh, this this is this is help for a small business. This is help for business, business, business." Uh, to be clear, is, is this help for the business or is this help for the employee of the business? No, look, the the well, it it would certainly uh, indirectly help the business, but we're not asking the government to subsidize the actual business itself and give them money so the business owner has his or her own income protected. We're asking the government to help insulate and protect the wages of employees. Businesses do have the other option, and that is to lay off workers and put them on employment insurance, but that really doesn't help employees by any means. Uh, it's happening in large numbers already. It also sets back the business and the economy because if the business then is going to take uh, weeks or months to get back up and running and then hire back their, their dismissed employees afterwards, gosh, the employee's gone through stress through that, but then the business doesn't get back up and running. Remember, when we put somebody else on, uh, somebody on EI, they, they may say at the end of this, you know what, I'm going to stay on EI for a little bit. I know you've offered me my job back, but I'm stressed out. I want to stay on I want to stay on EI for a little bit longer. If they've kept with the if they're kept with the company, the payroll is still flowing, they're likely to come back the very next day after the COVID emergency is over. All right. Uh, we'll watch as the story unfolds. Dan Kelly, once again, thanks for your time. Anytime.